Welcome to Math Studio Talk. The purpose of these videos is to help you interpret what students should be able to do and understand to meet the demands of Common Core Math. We will demonstrate various games, activities, and models that can be used within the structure of a formal lesson plan to develop flexible thinking and deep understanding. And of course, we'll show you the math. Hi, I'm Nick Timpone. In this video, we will deal with the number and operations in base 10 domain for second grade, which builds from the work done in the MBT domain in first grade. As you can see, students will extend their understanding of place value and the properties of operations to add and subtract fluently within 100. All of these standards are important. In the time we have, we will only be able to examine some of them. Let's get started with standard 2, MBT 1. In this standard, students are going to extend their understanding of place value to include the hundreds place. The key concept here is to know that 10 tens is the same as 100. Here is a fantastic activity to introduce this topic. Give pairs of students a pile of straws, but strategically make it somewhere between 111 and 119. And then without any further instruction, ask the students to count them. Before they start counting, get some guesses. Look at that pile. How many straws do you think are there? Record those guesses on the board, and then let them begin counting. They are going to count in many, many different ways. You're going to have kids split up the piles, count their own pile, add the piles together. You'll have students put them in piles of five and count by fives. Put them in piles of two and count by two. Count them one at a time. You may get one who wants to count them all by himself and his partner count none of them. None of that matters. Just let them count. After they've counted, take their answers. How many did you get? Compare it to what their guess was. And then see if anyone bundled in 10. If someone bundled in 10, use that to teach the concept. If no pairs bundled in 10s, be prepared with your own bundles of 10 and say, look, I counted by bundling in tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119. I got 119 straws. Do you think there's any other bundling that I can do with this? Let's count these again. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. What can I do with those tens? If a student doesn't say, and it's most likely that one of them will, you can put 10 tens together, then you say it. I can take 10 tens, put them together, and make 100. Now I have a bundle of 10 tens, which is the same as one bundle of 100. I have another 10, and I have nine ones. Can I bundle this 10 with anything? No, there are no other 10s to bundle it. I have nine ones. Can I do anything with these ones? No, we can't bundle it because we need one more in order to make a 10. On to standard two, NBT three. In first grade, students learned how to count to 120 and read and write numbers to 100. Place value strips or base 10 blocks are excellent for teaching expanded form. Let's use base 10 blocks. Tell the students to build the number 300. One, two, three, and tell them to write 300 underneath the model. Then have the students build 40. 10, 20, 30, 40, and have them write 40.
then ask the students to build five. One, two, three, four, five. And have the students write five. Then say, please, put an addition sign between those numbers. And then you can say, hey, guess what? You just learned a new way to represent a number, and it's called expanded form. And then have them finish by writing 345 equals 300 plus 40 plus 5. Repeat this activity with other numbers, including numbers that show the zero moving through the place values. Students can practice this activity on their own or in pairs with the base 10 blocks, or they can use the place value strips. Reading and writing multi-digit numbers does not appear as a standard in third grade, but shows up again in fourth. So it is important to spend enough time with these standards in second grade. It's also important for students to practice this work throughout the year with fluency drills. OK, we're going to look at standards 2 MBT5 and 2 MBT7 together, because they are closely related. Then we will come back to 2 MBT6. In second grade, as in first grade, students are not expected to learn the algorithm for addition. We want students to play with the numbers and experiment with models so that they are set up to learn the algorithm. They are taught to add within 100 by using the properties of operations and their understanding of place value. Students can experiment with many models and strategies to perform the additions. This will help students develop flexible thinking and solidify their understanding of the base 10 place value system. Let's look at adding a multi-digit number using base 10 blocks. Have the students build the number 128. 100, 20, 8. And then have them write the number underneath the model. 128. And now we're going to add in the second number. 200. 34, and have the students write that number. And then tell the students to add this together by putting the hundreds with the hundreds, the tens with the tens, and the ones with the ones. So we're going to add now. We have three hundreds. We have six tens, and we have eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ones. Students know they can only have nine ones in the one place value, so they need to take ten of them and trade them out for a ten. Now students are ready to write the answer. 128 plus 234 equals 1, 2, 300. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 2, 1, 2, 360, 2. Subtraction can be taught in the same way. Let's look at 386 minus 124. Have the students build 386. 300, 2, 4, 6, 8, 6, 2, Four, six, and have them write that. 300, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. One, two, three, four, five, six. 386. Now tell the students, we want to subtract 124. So let's write that expression. 386 minus 124 and ask the students to start in the hundreds place and begin taking away base 10 blocks. We're going to take away 100. We're going to take away two tens. We're going to take away four ones. Now we ask students to solve the problem simply by reading the number that's left. 386 minus 124 equals 1, 200. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 2. 262.
Okay, let's solve an addition problem using jumps on a number line. If you're using a number line and using jumps, you need a starting point. So the starting point is the first number, 286. Then you have to consider the jumps you're gonna take. You wanna try and make it one digit addition. So if we have 286, we can add 300 to it very easily because we're only adding in the hundreds place. The 86 comes along for the ride. So 286 plus 300, gets us to 586. Now I've added the hundreds, the next place we're going to add is the tens. I have eight tens and I have one ten. The six is coming along, the five is coming along. 596. Now I have an eight and what a student should be able to do here is decompose that eight into four and four. Four from here gets you to 600, and four more from 600 gets you to 604. Let's look at this subtraction problem. 675 minus 225. A nice strategy for a subtraction is thinking about it as adding up. What number has to be added to 225 to get to 675? Let's think about it. Well, trying to stay with single digit addition, let's look at it by place value. Let's think about the hundreds. I'm in the two hundreds, and I want to get to the six hundreds. Single digit fact, two plus four is six. So let's start with 400 and see where we get. 225 plus 400 gives us 625. Okay. We're at 625, we need to get to 675. Second graders can count by tens. 625, 635, 645, 655, 665, 665, 675, and notice that was five tens, which is 50 equals 675. So to finish up the problem, I have to add up my jumps. My first jump was from 225 to 625 with a jump of 400. From there, I took a jump of 50 to get to 675. My total jumps was 400 plus 50 equals 450. So 675 minus 225 equals 450. The purpose of having students perform these operations in these ways is to help them develop deep and enduring understanding of place value and properties of operations. In third grade, students will begin to use algorithms for addition and subtraction, and by the end of fourth grade, they need to be fluent with the standard algorithm for addition and subtraction. Because of all the place value work and properties of operations work that they do in grades K to two, students will be able to learn those algorithms more easily and become and remain proficient in them. Back to standard two, MBT6. For this standard, we want the students to add four two-digit numbers using their understanding of place value and properties of operations. Let's look at this problem. 38 and 42 is accessible to students because of the eight and the two. They can make a 10. Eight and two makes 10, and then they know they have to rebundle, so it becomes 38 plus 42 equals 80. Now they can decompose the 24 to 20 plus 4, which allows them to make 100. 80 plus 20 is 100, plus 4, plus 13. And then they can decompose the 13 to get 100 plus 4, plus 6, plus 7. See what I did? I decomposed the 13 to 6 and 7. Why? To make a 10. Equals 100 plus 10 plus 7 equals 117. Using place value knowledge, they can just take these numbers apart. So let's use the original. We can look at all the 10s and then look at all the 1s. We have three tens in 38, plus one ten in 13, plus two tens in 24, plus four tens in 40. 
So let's add up the tens. It's single digits now. Three tens plus one ten is four tens. Four tens plus two tens is six tens. Six tens plus four tens is ten tens is a hundred. Now let's look at our ones. Eight plus three plus four plus two. And students can do that in many ways. They can count on with their fingers. They can decompose. There are many uh, strategies they can use to add their single digit numbers. But we get 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 and 4 is 15. 15 plus 2 is 17. We get 100 plus 17 equals 117. There are many ways students may solve this problem. The idea is to let them experiment and discover multiple ways to solve it. Remember, by the end of second grade, we want the students to become fluent in adding and subtracting within 100 using only their knowledge of place value, the properties of operations, and the relationship between addition and subtraction. They should not need concrete models anymore for adding and subtracting within 100. Thanks for watching this Math Studio talk. We hope that you enjoyed it, found it meaningful, and learned a thing or two to take back to your classroom.